Hi, fellow Kubernetes. I'm Vanessa Socket, and I'm going to be talking about an example use case for index jobs, a project called the Flux Operator that we've been working on at Lawrence Livermore National Lab. Let's get started. Once upon a time, there was a resource manager named Flux Framework. And Flux lived in HPC land, along with the other resource managers, a few container technologies, and of course, a sysadmin or two. And Flux was really great at a lot of things that you see in this table, but especially Flux was great at full hierarchical and graph-based resource management. Oh, hi there, little friend. You have a question. What does graph-based resource management mean? That is a good question. So let's say that we have a resource allocation with four nodes. Doesn't matter if this is on HPC or on a Kubernetes cluster. We could theoretically install Flux and start what's called a Flux instance. Now the Flux instance can actually see the resources that are available to it. And then if we were to create a job, launch a job, the really cool part of that is that Flux is going to create instances of itself to run on the sub resources. And if you're looking at this and you're like, hmm, I don't know, this looks a little bit graphy. You are totally right. We're looking at different depths of a graph where each depth knows about and validates its own resources. So this means that Flux is really good at portability. You can run it on a cluster. You can run it alongside Luster. You can run it on a share. You can really run it like anywhere. <laughs> you can run it in a container using Flux as a total no-brainer. Flux is also really good at co-scheduling because it's able to know the node topology. So let's say that you have a workflow that requires GPUs to communicate. Flux can schedule them to be physically close together. Flux is also really good at jobs coordination. So here we have the Mumi workflow. And Mumi was incredibly heterogeneous in terms of the different needs for the workflow components. Flux was able to intelligently schedule them so that those components best match the resources they needed across a very large set of resources. OK, so you know Flux is like hanging out over here in HPC land. And as you know, over here, there's this other cloud land where we have technologies like Kubernetes. And in between them is the fog of war, if you've ever played like a, a strategy game. And in this fog of war, the idea is that there's something that needs to be uncovered and we need to go on a journey. And so last year in the lab, this is exactly what we decided to do. We said, onward to converge computing the space between HPC and cloud. So in this space, one of the early projects to emerge is the Flux Operator, and this is going to be what I'm talking about today. Okay, let's get started on today's journey, starting with a stop at Definition Island. So probably most of you know what an operator is. It is a controller for a Kubernetes cluster to manage objects. So the Flux Operator is a controller that allows us to set up that Flux instance to run across pods. And specifically this part here, we have a special term for it. We call it a mini cluster. And no, I don't mean a cluster for ants. I actually mean a set of duplicate pods created by the index job. Here is where the index job comes in. I am Kubernetes configured to run a Flux instance. And it's really cool conceptually because it's like you have an entire cluster in the cloud, an HPC cluster for you to control. So let's say that we start with a Kubernetes cluster of size nine. We could theoretically create a mini cluster also of size nine to maximally, maximally utilize our resources. And index zero of that, brought, of that job is called the broker, orchestrating the job. The way the pods communicate is via a tree-based overlay network. And it has kind of all the niceties that you'd expect. So batch jobs, queuing, et cetera. OK, basic question. How do I submit a job? Well, if you come visit us in HPC land, we're going to give you a command line thing. If you go off to cloud land, somebody's going to hand you a YAML file. So to like start off, we figured, OK, we'll just define the needs of a job in a mini cluster.yaml file. This is our custom resource definition, or CRD. So basically, you define your job in this file. You give it to the Flux operator. It's going to create you a mini cluster. And then your job is going to complete, run, and everything cleans up. Yay, OK, I'm ready to make a mini cluster. The next stop in our journey is going to be to Experiment Empire, where we ask empirical questions like, how well does this work again? 
So we decided we wanted to compare it to the MPI operator, which is another operator in the space that is very similar in nature. This started as part of the Kubeflow project, defines an MPI job as its custom resource. It has a slightly different design. It uses a launcher node to coordinate workers via SSH. Like the Flux operator, it also uses a dedicated host name and a service for workers. And we had to use a modified version to scale to over 100 MPI ranks. Check out the paper right there <laughs> if you want to learn more about that. Okay. So like, how do they compare? So we decided to run an experiment that looked at lamps, a molecular simulation on an unoptimized containers. This is what that experiment looked like. So we needed to use a 65 node cluster to account for that extra launcher node, but then we want to test on sizes basically 64 down to eight of a mini cluster or just sort of an index job. And you can also see the corresponding number of ranks, which are the MPI processes. Okay, so we're going to create that cluster. And then for each of the operators, we're going to launch a job or create the mini cluster across each of those different sizes. We're going to record timings and we're going to save the outputs. Ah, show me the results. Apparently, our sun god at the empirical experiment island is angry. Right away, sun god. Do the results. Okay, sun god has questions. If the flux operator mini cluster is created via an index job, how well does that scale? Well, here you're looking at mini cluster creation and deletion times. So this includes the entire bringing up and then bringing down of the pods, but does not include lamps. And as we move across the x-axis, we move from size eight to size 64, so the cluster gets bigger. And the really cool part is that this scales really nicely, like the index job is doing a great job. Okay, so next question from the sun god. If the flux and MPI operator have different designs, like how efficient is each operator set up? So because we are comparing apples and oranges here, we need to look at them separately. Starting with the MPI operator, here's the end-to-end -end time. So this is the notification of the job through the timestamp when it's completed. This, I must note, is when the pods are ready to go. There's absolutely no waiting for pods here. And it does not include the lamps run. And what you see is that there's a two-fold increase in time from size 8 to size 64. Now, the similar thing we could compare to in flux is a flux start. This is from like when the broker comes to life through when he shuts down or when it shuts down. So this, I need to point out that this includes the broker waiting for all the other pods. We don't know when the broker is going to come up relative to the other pods. It also does not include the lamps run. And it looks pretty okay to me. Okay, so when you remove the setup, let's compare finally apples to apples. How do the run times of these things compare? So specifically, we're going to look at flux submit versus MPI run. This is like if you logged into an HPC center and you like wanted to run this with flux directly or with MPI run, that's the command you would type. And this does include the lamps run. This is like the direct wrapper to lamps as close as we can get without being inside lamps. And I want to point out that for these experiments, so we can't really generalize to like everything, but for these experiments, we did note that the flux operator is consistently faster. We think it might be related to the bootstrap or other MPI variables, but the difference is like really insignificant. Okay, so when we peel back another layer of the onion and we look just at the lamps time reported by lamps, so, so no wrappers, we again see the differences get even smaller. <laughs> but if you kind of visually look at the medians, they're about 10% lower per flux. And we think that like for larger workflows, this could potentially translate to cost savings. So what did we learn? Well, we learned that the index job does allow the mini cluster pods to scale really nicely. Very happy about that. We think that Flux's zero MQ bootstrap might be related to why it, it's a little bit faster because the MPI operator uses an SSH-based bootstrap. More work, of course, is needed to investigate the performance. Like, folks, lamps is not it. And this might be the most important point of the entire talk, so listen up. The architecture of the flux operator allows for multiple jobs to be run on the mini cluster. So we avoid the infamous etcd API server bottlenecks and it enables high throughput. And finally, we want to point out that the MPI operator does require that extra laundry node and it could also benefit from using an index job. They seem pretty great to me. <laughs> Already we've learned so much at the experiment empire. The flux operator has promised. Yay! <laughs> but I have some questions. I hope you do too. We need to take a quick stop at the Reality Republic. So this question, how do I submit a job? 
did you really think to run these experiments? We applied like a YAML file like a thousand times. Do you think that's how I want to spend my workday? Absolutely not. We actually ran these experiments using a tool called Flux Cloud. In Flux Cloud, you define your experiments in a YAML file. Yeah, I know we can't escape the YAML. It's everywhere. So you still use it here. And then there's just three commands. So up, apply, and down to bring everything up, run your experiments, and then bring everything down. So you can kind of like watch, work on other things, watch your containers, logs, and have a sandwich, have an avocado. It's super easy. And then when you're done, all of your config files, data, and output are saved for reproducibility. So oh, everyone take a breath. Our vision for converged computing is not applying a billion YAML files. It is a comfortable, intuitive user interface. Okay, so one really awesome thing about being in Reality Republic is we know that reality is informed by vision. So as we're here, let's take a ride on the visionary vehicle we're going to jump on and ask this question, how could we submit jobs? So I played a fiendish trick on you. I didn't tell you that if you don't give a command to the Flux operator mini cluster CRD, the Flux operator will actually bring up an interactive interface for you to submit jobs, for you to monitor your jobs in a table or check output logs. And it also serves a RESTful API that can be interacted with via SDK. And so that is closer to our vision for this future of converged computing and we also are thinking about some of these other things coming soon to a theater or Kubernetes cluster <laughs> near you. So keep the watch out. Alrighty, we're coming in for a landing on the visionary vehicle and we plop down in the collaboration coast and we're met by our friends. Yay. And so one point I really want to impress is that in order to make progress in this converged computing space, it is absolutely essential that we work together and share our ideas. And to kick us off on that thread, I'm gonna share with you some of the design tips that I learned when designing the Flux operator. Okay, problem. I have a resource manager that communicates via a network. Solution, you can use an index job and as plus a headless service as a nice solution with fully qualified domain names. Problem, I need specialized logic to generate something. You. <laughs> You could run it via an entry point. If it's just like a one-time thing, you can create an isolated pod to run before the index job and run it that way. Or you could use init containers. Problem, my workers are specialized. They are, they're, they're, not, they're special snowflakes and I can't use the index job. Okay. You can use logic that distinguishes based on the index. This is exactly what we do for the broker. And a cool suggestion is maybe the jobs API could allow us to define groups with custom logic. Could work. Problem, I need multi-tenancy. So, okay, so I don't have a great solution for this one, but what we're doing is we're starting the container as root, getting everything set up, and then we're actually running the jobs as a user. So this is just the start of mapping out this converged computing space. What's so exciting is that there's more projects to be discovered and worked on, and we need your help. We want you to get involved, so please come and find us on GitHub under Flux Framework. The operator project is also there too. Flux Cloud is under the Converged Computing Organization. And to learn more about Flux, check out fluxframework.org. And that is how to reach me or any of my clones here, apparently, <laughs> via email. And I am DSOC on all the social media places. Thank you to these cloud providers for supporting us in our adventures. And thank you for having me at KubeCon. I had a blast. Mihao, back to you.